All right, your boy Mixed Man's to be here live from the MMB Radio Studios or the MMB Radio Podcast, where no topic is too big or too small. We talk about them all. And on the phone lines right now, I want to welcome in a guest that I'm really excited and interested in learning a lot about tonight. So for everybody out there who was sending me questions, you too will get to learn a lot about her as much as I am going to tonight. Miss Yara Sky, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for uh, taking some time to be on the podcast. And um, have you ever have you done podcasts before? Have you done like interviews like this before? Yes, I have. I've probably I've done probably like two of them so far. Okay. I've done one like I've done one. I've I've done a Skype video call, something like that, and I've done another radio one too. All right. I I just wanted to make sure because I don't like to be the first because they always say that your first time is not always your best. You know what I mean? So <laughs> I don't I don't want I don't want to be you know all that pressure on you know to have to be great the first go round. You know as much as I wanna I wanna pop your podcast cherry there. You know I want to make sure that uh you know you've you've been around the block a little bit with it before I you know get in there and start talking to you about some stuff. But um yeah so I guess we'll jump right into this. So um you're an adult film star, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, what uh, what made you want to do that? Like, how what you know? How did you get into doing, you know, adult films? I started with camming in the beginning because I was friends with a girl that was a cam girl, and she kind of like got me into it because I wasn't really liking my regular job. I used to work in retail, and she made it look so easy how she was making money and how she got to make her own schedule and literally just be there interact with fans and money was coming like very decent for her so I was deciding to give it a try and um, when I started doing it in the beginning I didn't have like such a big fan base but um, I got with this campsite that had a lot of traffic and I just generated a really good fan base on there then I was like okay um, I like this I kind of wanted to do porn after that because I, I just thought it was really fun and I wanted to challenge myself and do other things too so then I got into porn <laughs> you make it sound so simple like <laughs> like you know one day i was selling clothes or you know i was selling hamburgers and trying to get people to upgrade to an extra value meal and then the next thing you know you get fucked on camera um so for the people there that are trying to make the connection there um tell us where did you originally grow up it, you know what was your upbringing like i grew up in fort lauderdale florida uh and I am, my parents were, like, I have half-sisters, not all of my sisters are, like, my full-blood sisters. I don't have, like, three other sisters, and they're not my full-blood sisters. So, basically, I was the only child, in a way, because um, they lived with their mom. And uh, so, me, uh, me growing up, I kind of wanted a lot of attention, but at the same time, I was very, like, I had, like, social anxiety at the same time, and in high school, I I've got along with a lot of people. I did like drama club and all that. I just like to be in front of the camera. So I think that's where it came from. I'm very like, I love being in front of the camera. I love taking pictures and I love attention from guys. So that all came into play. <laughs> so now when you're in school, how much attention, you know, did you give back to these guys? I mean, were you like, uh... no, at, in school, it's funny because in high school, I was very shy actually in the beginning. And when guys did give me attention, I kind of avoided them at first. But, like, later on after high school towards, like, early college, I was going to parties a lot because I never used to party early high school. Like, uh, towards the end, I started to, like, hang out with a clique of friends that were, like, very sexual and um, adventurous and stuff. So they kind of introduced me into doing orgies and, like, having fun and doing, like, crazy, like, teenage dream type stuff. And then, like, towards college, I started hooking up more and going out to parties more, and, like, I just got into the scene after that. Now, were you nervous when you started doing camming? Like, I mean, for most people, getting up in front of a crowd just to do a speech or just to talk is nerve-wracking for some. To go in mm -hmm. front of a camera, and although you don't see the people, well, I mean, sometimes you do if it's, a you know, cam, the cam show, but... Taking your clothes off in front of complete strangers, like, how did that – there was no, like, easing into it, or you just naturally felt comfortable doing that? Because I was home in my own room, 
I I didn't really think of it like, oh my gosh, so many people are watching. This is scary because I was in the comfort of my own room. Like it, it's like a different situation when you actually have a lot of people in your face. So I was less nervous to do it just being in my room and people were interacting with me like fine at first i mean like i was just like okay this is my first time doing this i've never done this before but then guys are so nice to me so then it just it just i just started doing it more and i got i was having fun and and then when i got into porn i i, I was a little bit nervous about like about to do my first scene because i'm like okay this is my first time on the porn set and i don't know how many people are going to be here and i don't know if i'm going to get along with the male talent that well like i don't know but my first scene was very like simple and i connected with the male talent really well he was really nice to me he was pretty much acting like he was my boyfriend before we even started filming so it was like he kind of like welcomed me in and he nurtured me and made me feel really comfortable before I actually got into the scene. So then I was like, okay, this is easy. So my first scene, I had fun and it, I was happy. <laughs> it, well, it sounds like you had a good time. I mean, that's, yeah. say it's, for some people, that's, you know, not the easiest thing to do. And you, you seem like you just kind of yeah. grasped onto it pretty quickly. Um, yeah. But did you ever, ever get to a point where you had those thoughts go through your mind? The what ifs like, like, this is on film. This is, you know, recorded. This is like pretty much forever. Um, yeah. Did you ever think about that at any point? I did because before I actually got into that whole the sex industry, it took me a while to think about it. I literally was thinking about this for months and months and months. Then um, I just went into it and I try not to like think so. I like I was worried in the beginning about people finding out and I'm like, okay, I'm more worried about the first reaction but I feel like once people find out then it'll be fine because it's already out there and then you can't really react anymore because like like they can't really react anymore because they already know so like the first scene when my first scene was about to drop I had like I was like um feeling anxious I was like oh my gosh it's about to drop it's about to happen like and I was thinking about it a lot and then my friends slowly started to find out they're like are you doing porn and like um I was like yeah and like but I I thought I would get like hate from it from my friends but they were all like very supportive and then um just the reactions weren't what I expected it to be so and that's a good thing because I kind of I thought it was going to be bad reactions mostly but any if anything my dad reacted in a bad way of course but then like he accepted it later on so yeah I mean obviously that that's daddy's little girl you know and she's yeah getting banged and you know, slopping yeah. arms. So it's not, <laughs> it's not the easiest <laughs> thing for a parent to just say, yeah, that's great. I know. You know what I mean? Like, cause I'm sure he's got friends and his friends are going to see this. So, you know, and all... I, made sure, I made sure I told him before he found out from other, I didn't want him to find out through other people. I wanted yeah. to be the one to say it to him. Cause I was like, the worst thing is if his friends or a family member were like, look, I found your daughter on this site or whatever. And I, I just didn't want it to happen that way. So I wanted to be the first one to tell, to tell my parents. I told my mom before she passed away and I told my dad. He wasn't too excited, of course. My mom, she was like, just be careful. Like, my mom was more open-minded than my dad. And she just wanted me to be happy. As long as I was safe, that's all that mattered to her. It was like, please be safe. Please go into this very smart and just... Mm -hmm. Just be level-headed and don't get into hardcore drugs. Just don't be one of those girls that, like, get destroyed through this. And I'm like, I promise you I will be fine. Like, I'm smart and I will interact with the right people. And if I find someone that doesn't, like, I can't really vibe with them, then I will not, like, be with them. So, like, she trusted me. Yeah, I mean, that's got to be weird for, you know, a, a parent, especially like a father. You know, he just happens to be working with some guys. And, hey, I just happen to put on big black cocks and tiny pink holes. Mm -hmm. And guess who I saw, you know? Um, mm -hmm. That's got to be awkward. So I uh, probably did the right thing there by uh, letting him know first him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, how many scenes have you done to date? Now, a lot of people, they, they don't keep count because – there's I've been told that you shoot a bunch of different content a day and you don't know exactly what's being yeah. used and not used. So do you kind of have an idea of what you've done to date? I would comfortably say over 25 scenes because I just moved out to here to L.A. like a month ago. And in Florida, 
I was limited on, like, availability because, you know, all the work is in L.A. So, like, I had to, like, travel back and forth. And then on top of that, I was cami mostly because that's where I was getting my most of my income from. And that was, like, my, my side hustle as well. So I wasn't shooting as consistently as most girls were or are. So um, once I moved out here, work is starting to pick up now. So, because I wanted to move where all the work is. And so, because in Florida, it's not that many companies. It's mostly amateur. And they're like four companies in Florida. And they only want to shoot you a few times when you're brand new. And then they kind of want to move on to the next new girl. So that's how they are. So it was like the best idea for me to move to LA. Because companies, there's so many more companies out here. And then they'll shoot you more and more and more. And since I haven't even done anal yet. And like, there's still so many companies out of shop for yet. I'll be in this for a while where I can um, still, you know, get the chance to work with many companies I haven't shot for before. Yeah, I was going to say, um, what you know, what is some of the stuff that you still want to do? I mean, you're fairly new in the business. I mean, new mm-hmm. as far as standards, you know, like there's people that have shot shitloads of films and scenes and they don't even remember but at least you have like a number in your head of what you think you've done um so Mm -hmm. there's probably a lot of stuff you still haven't done you mentioned you haven't done anal yet but what is some stuff that you uh first off what is something that you enjoy doing and what is some stuff that you still want to do i do want to do anal eventually just not right now but i recently shot for kink.com and I, because I wanted to, I have never done bondage on camera or anything with like BDSM or bondage. And a lot of my fans were asking about that because they were so used to seeing me shooting like vanilla type white girl scenes. And they're like, oh, I want to see you do bondage and I want to see you do some rough stuff now. And I'm like, okay. Um, so I hit up kink and I, I was like, I got booked for a, a girl, girl BDSM dom submissive type scene and it went really well. It didn't drop yet because I shot that like a couple weeks ago. So I'm excited for that to get released. And I, yeah, so I do want to do anal eventually, just not right now. Of course, I'm just so new and I'm just not ready to give that up yet. <laughs> yeah, definitely hold out for the highest bidder on that one because uh, <laughs> once you start giving shit away for free, you know what I mean? Like Drake says, you shouldn't have to yeah. fuck for free. You know what I mean? So <laughs> just make sure you're getting paid if you're going to do this, you know, anal stuff. Um, have yeah. you ever do you, have you had anal in your personal life? Uh, well, I tried. Um, in my personal life, we attempted, but we passed on it because I I couldn't handle it. I was just not ready. And he tried. One of the guy I was with, he tried, and like I was just like I don't like this feeling. It hurts. Like, and on top of that, in porn, you have to prep for it. And like when I was with this guy, he just wanted to just do it. And I'm like, I need to prep, I need to have toys to prepare with, I need to have um one of those enemas, like I need to clean my system and just be ready, like <laughs> He just to do wanted this. to shove that shit in there. <laughs> he just wanted he didn't care, he just wanted to do it and I had to like take the proper steps to do it and, and I wasn't even ready. So I was just like, nah, I don't think I'm ready to do this now and I want right now I'm not really into the feeling right now and before when I actually do it in porn I just wanna um, prep the right way before I get into it because I know you have to not eat for a certain amount of hours before you do anal and you got to drink just straight water and you got to play with the, you have to have these anal plugs and leave it in your ass all day <laughs> so well it seems like, like you've been doing your research it seems like you know you've been looking it up facts of how to prep for this yeah and like I and my agent tells me this and other girls tell me how they prep so I kind of learn from them Sometimes I, I do, for my cam shows, I, I use butt plugs. I'm able to stick things up my butt. I'm just not ready for the actual cock yet. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not ready for the whole in and out, in and out. You just kind of like want to stick it in and just kind of leave it there. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it makes great for cam shows, but probably not so good mm-hmm. for scenes. You know what I mean? Right. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, is your plans that when you do eventually do this, does it, it'll be the exact first time on camera that you do it? Or... Are you trying to at least do it once, like, off camera? I'm going to do it off camera before I do it on camera. I'm, like, um, I'm dating right now, so, like, I'm going to practice with him and um, definitely be – because I don't want to just do it on camera and, like, you know, not be ready. I, like, I want to have the real thing off camera before I get into it on camera, definitely. True. So um, you say you're dating. What's dating life <laughs> like? 
Is this, that, is that uh, weird? Is it awkward? It's different or? because, um, well, I'm not dating someone outside of the industry. He shoots for companies, so I'm dating like a, a, a director. And uh, so it's easier, I guess, with him, and he's open-minded, of course, because he's shooting, I'm shooting, and I'm okay with him traveling and shooting girls, and I'm okay, and like he's okay with me shooting, so I don't have to really worry about like, oh, my, my boyfriend's not in the industry. He's going to be jealous or he's not going to let me fucking die on camera, like all that stuff. Because I know that's typically the issue anyway. But I love how, like, how we're both in this industry. But, like, we still, like, when we're, when it comes to sex and love, it's like we know the difference and he likes me for my brain and um, we can still have fun and have sex and just be open-minded with everything. But this is, we just recently started dating. <laughs> So you're still in, in the beginning stages of this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, before that, what was your, your dating life like? I mean, you said you, you didn't start hooking up with people until later on. Um, mm -hmm. But did you have like a social dating life? My my rela my little relationship before that was a dominant submissive relationship. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't fully on. It wasn't, it was like open-minded. Um, it wasn't like because we it was more of just sex our relationship was really based on sex really i could say because i we weren't really like doing things a normal couple would do you know like going out everywhere every second of the day you know we were hanging out in the daytime and like but we we're hooking up most of the time and like i was having fun just i wanted to do be a submissive like try that out and like i thought it was fun so we were just really just having fun but right now i'm like I would say, like, um, starting to get serious, but, like, before, I was never really into a really serious relationship before. I was just always pushing guys away before. I was just hooking up. It was more just, like, having fun at first. So did this guy make you, like, sign a contract? This is, like, some Fifty Shades of Grey shit, or, like... No, no contract. <laughs> okay, so who initiated the, the, you know, the submissive stuff? Was it... Did you bring I, the idea to him? Well... Okay, I met her on a dating app, and uh, I was talking about him in my profile, how I was into dominant guys and stuff. So I guess that triggered him into messaging me. And then, so he was like, are you into, like, dominant submissive relationships? So I was like, well, I would love to try that out and whatever. So um, he was like, we just met after that, and we just went on with it. But, yeah, we definitely we did. We met online. Then it just happened. So, but are, he's back in Florida. Like I, we just broke it off because I moved. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 this is recent so, that you just broke up with this guy. Months ago, months okay. ago. Like right. I was. But you were shooting January. porn, though, right? I was, I was, I was hooking up with him before I got into porn, and then I got into porn, and then like a few months after porn, um, we stopped because um, I decided I wanted to go full force with it and move out here. So. I was going to say, did his attitude change when he saw that you were, you know, going full force? With yeah, it did. It, it, okay. Yeah, because um, even though he was like, oh, I'm okay with open relationships, whatever, he still was getting jealous um, about me doing porn. Because when I, t I told him, like, at first, I, I didn't tell him when I did my first scene because I was, like, scared. And then I told him, and he was like, wow, wow. Like, he was kind of like, his reaction was like, damn, like, why would you do that? Like... But then, like, I'm like, well, you agreed that you didn't fucking care who, what I was doing because we're not in anything serious, right? So, and I'm tested and I'm safe and, like, you shouldn't have an issue with this because you, you're probably hooking up with other people since you wanted an open relationship and you wanted it to be dominant submissive. So, I didn't really, he knew not to really, like, make a big deal out of it because we already knew what we agreed on. Mm -hmm. And then it ended so. up becoming a bigger deal, so... <laughs> Yeah, like, and eventually. <laughs> I kind of feel like that's how all guys are when they find out that their partner is either, you know, in, in the sex business or whatever sorts it may be. You know, they're, like, always mm -hmm. cool and chill with it at first. It's always, like, I want to brag mm -hmm. that I'm, you know, my girlfriend's a he, porn star. He would, then... like, he would, like, look up my videos. Like, he's in, he's in, he has a foot fetish. So he would, like, <laughs> look up my videos. He has a foot fetish. Mm 
And so he would look up my videos and get jealous when he would see, like, me doing, like, foot fetish scenes with guys, like, when they're, like, kissing my feet and stuff. And he would, like, message me, like, you know, I'm kind of jealous right now because I, I found this video of you, of you doing this foot fetish scene or whatever, whatever. And he, I know he was really into doing that, like, kissing my feet and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was one of the scenes that, that kind of got him jealous. But he he didn't really mind so much afterwards about me having sex with other guys, but it was that. But he just, his concern was... Am I gonna fuck these guys on camera better than me and him are fucking? And I think that's how he was thinking about it, because he gets more jealous if I'm having more fun on camera than with than with him. But see, guys got to realize too that that's part of like that the part of the acting aspect. You know what I mean? Like, yes, yeah. you are having sex, and you know, to mm -hmm. an extent, you may or may not be enjoying it. You know, I can't speak mm -hmm. for every talent, but. You have to kind of act like you're enjoying it a little bit, even if you're not, because quite honestly, if I'm watching one of your videos and you look like, you know, you're having a bad time, like I'm probably not going to watch the rest of it, you know? So that's a little weird, but, you know, kind of questions whether, you know, how good this guy is if he's, you know, feels threatened, but, but anyway, <laughs> you've moved on from him and, um, but you said you, you were you wanted to do the submissive thing. Now, have you always been a submissive type? Yeah, kind of. Um, well, I, I can be both. Like, in personality, I, I, with guys, I could be a submissive. In my general life with other people, I can be dominant or submissive. It just really depends on the situation. But sexually, I love playing a submissive. Um, I, I think it's fun for me to be submissive. As long as they're not fully on degrading me, like, you know, saying racial slurs and calling me out of my name like then i can just i can be a submissive and have fun so i just you, like when when i'm being controlled in bed kind of thing so i was gonna say what do you enjoy about the submissive part what do i just well the fact that he, i can be controlled in bed and being told what to do in bed i love that and then just being choked and like little stuff like that where the guy just completely takes control Okay, so if you had to paint the perfect scene, like you get to be the director this time, what is the perfect <laughs> scene like? Kind of take us details. What is the perfect scene? Um, I like being. I would be caught by surprise. Maybe if I've done something wrong, like for a scene, I'll just be like, "Oh, I did something behind my boyfriend's back, or I cheated on him, or whatever like that," and like. He, he, like, I come home and, like, he surprises me and he just, like, pulls me from behind and slams me on the bed and, like, fucks me really rough and ties my hands and feet. And pretty much I like being caught off guard by a guy when they just grab me. But, of course, I would be consenting to it. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I mean, it kind of sounds like, you know, you got caught having a better time on video doing a foot fetish thing and your boyfriend yeah. and caught you and decided he was going to do anal and didn't let you prep. You know, that's kind of like going to the extreme. You know, just kind of basing off real life, you know, kind of bringing it full circle. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you've done girls' scenes with girls. Um, was the first time you hooked up with girls on camera, or were you doing this actively off camera? The first time I've done sex with girls was on camera, and... I mean, making out, of course, and all that, just little stuff like that off camera. I've always hooked up with, like, made out with girls. It was never an issue, but for sex, um, yeah, it was on camera. Now, what was that experience like? Was that nerve-wracking? Was that kind of like a yeah. rush? Or... Yeah, because, like, I've never, I, when I was, before I actually did it, I'm like, I've never eaten a pussy before. Like, I don't know what that's going to be like. Um, it's different from a guy. I just didn't know. And it's like, you don't really have many options of what to do because, like, when you have a dick there, you know, the dick kind of guides you. So when you're fucking a guy, he just sticks it in and that's it. And, like, it's so you, you know what to do after that. But with a girl, you have to be, you have to come up with a lot of things in your head to keep the scene going because it's like, what much can you do with just a vagina? So you have to, like, there's strap-ons, there's dildos, there's fingers and all that stuff. So, but, um, I liked it, especially when I did my kink shoot, and I've done the girl-girl with that. I liked it, so. 
Now, would you be open to hooking up and dating girls outside of the business, or is this something you're just no. like, just cool doing <laughs> it on film? I would never date a girl. I'm not into dating girls. I don't mind hooking up with them, but um, I I would never be in a relationship with a girl. I just don't see myself in a serious relationship with a girl. I've never been attracted to a girl in the way where I have to date them and like be serious with them and like all that romance and all that type of stuff. Cause I'm not really into girls in that way, but sexually I like in the moment type things where we can hook up and like, I think it's hot like when it's random. Now, a lot of people have their opinions on the adult business and say that, you know, it's this, it's that, it's what have you. Um, what is one of the things that before you got into it that you had in your mind that you were saying to yourself, you know, I really think this is how it's going to be. And then when you got there, it was not like that. Uh, before I was like questioning myself with, uh, as far as STDs and stuff like that, I was like, um, I don't know how exactly that's going to work or whatever. I was thinking more about that and like all the serious stuff like that. But then, I was talking to someone in the industry for a while, and I wanted to know what their experience was like. So they told me, you don't need to worry because, uh, girl, everyone gets tested, like, for every 14 days, and they're very serious about, you know, STDs and stuff like that. And we, we, in the industry, there's a system designed to where, like, basically, when you get tested every 14 days, if anything does come up that you have something, they will you will leave that you don't shoot. They won't shoot you if you have anything, and you have to provide your test for every director to see before you even shoot anything. So, um, if, if anything happens, they'll just let you, they'll send you home or whatever that is. Um, you got to be very careful as well on hooking up outside of the industry because you can carry diseases from outside the industry into in, inside the industry and you can affect the whole talent pool. So I'm very like careful with that stuff and which I don't have to worry because I'm only hooking up with this guy and he's inside the industry. So we're always tested, you know, cause who gets like anyone that's not important, they don't get tested as much as we do every 14 days. They just don't take the time to do that. So like they're more prone to getting anything and a lot of stuff that happens most likely comes from outside of the industry and people would bring a, a STD inside the industry from outside of the industry. So that's normally, so like they track that stuff. So like I mentioned a couple of times already, you're still fairly new to this, to the business. Yeah. And um, a couple of questions I got from people online. Uh, one of the people wanted to know, since you're still kind of new to this, um, what's the best advice that you could give to somebody who's looking to get into the business. Now, they didn't say whether it was a guy or a girl getting into it, but it was a guy that sent the, the tweet. Mm -hmm. But for both aspects, like, what would your advice be? You seem like you had a pretty easy route into the business, but has there been any other people that you've spoken with in the business where you've seen, like, hiccups and, you know, kind of stuff that would prevent you from getting where you want to be in the business? If I would, so you're asking, like, if I had advice to give someone trying to get into porn? Yeah, like if you if someone said okay. to you like, "What's the best advice?" You know, I mean, like I said you seem like you had a pretty easy way of getting into it, but I'm sure you've probably heard yeah. some stories. Um, I would say um, I would tell the person to talk to as many people as you can and take from what they tell them and do a lot of research because I wouldn't just jump right into it and just say, you know what, let's let me do this. Um, it took months before I actually started. You know, I've been thinking about this for a while before I got in the industry. Even before I started camming, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about every situation and if I was ready and, like, and then eventually I just went into it. So I would just say to just take time to do a lot of research and, like, make sure you're ready and you're willing. It, like, know that once it's out there, everyone is going to see it and, um, just be ready to take a risk like that just because it's, some people will come in and they'll think maybe I can do porn without no one ever knowing. And I know I, I knew when I came in, I knew people were going to find out anyway. I was just so nervous about the day it was going to happen. That's what I was thinking. You know what I mean? So um, just be, just be open to knowing that people are going to find out and just know that you're ready. Make sure you're, you know, if you want to let your morals go, then go for it. But just, like, make sure you're ready. <laughs> yeah. What is a typical day like for you? Uh, someone wants to know, like, how much time do you have to yourself or is it constantly on set? 
a typical day for me on set or just in general? I, I guess both. Like, I mean, is, is most of your days shooting or like, you know, what percentage of the week are you shooting and what percentage of the week do you kind of have to yourself? Sometimes I shoot like twice a month or three times a month. I don't shoot like as much as you, as most people would think I do because especially for me being a, a black girl in the industry, work doesn't come that quickly, especially if you don't have a big name for yourself yet. So right now, since I'm still new, I'm still kind of building my name. I mostly just can throughout the day. And I just, other than that, I'm hanging out with friends. I'm going to the beach. I'm doing whatever. But most of the time I'm camming. And then when I'm on set, the week I'm shooting, of course, I don't cam because I would be too sore to cam. And I'll be exhausted because I was on set all day or whatever. So weeks where I'm not really shooting is the, is the time that I would be taking the time to cam. Now, you mentioned being black and being in the business. Do you find it easier or harder? Is there any kind of, you know, uh, tensions that you see in the business? Or is it pretty much, you know, the same as everybody? Um, it's more so like, well, we all know that um, for us, um, ebony porn is not as high in demand like full-on ebony porn they are more what's really selling is interracial and uh so girls black girls are always getting booked to shoot with white guys and like i would always get asked questions like oh why aren't you shooting with any black guys and they think it's me deciding not to or thinking i'm being you know racist against my own race or whatever but it's really not the case it's just what's really selling is interracial and that's what's being requested more so it's more, it's not really the talent's fault. It's more of like the consumer and like what is selling. So directors are going to go buy what sells and they're going to book what sells. So most likely, I mean, there is black on black porn that still exists, but it's not as much as, you know, interracial porn or whatever. So I have never shot a scene with a black guy yet and I would love to, but not that much work for black on black porn is available out there. Now, I mean, obviously, you've probably hooked up with, you know, black guys in your personal life, but the first time you had to shoot or had sex with a white guy, was that a little weird, or did it just, no. just kind of go without Cause a bitch? Mostly, because I mostly dated white guys, so it wasn't anything different. Okay, okay. So, um, it kind of leads to this question of one guy I had. He wants to know, what kind of guys are you into? Do you have, like, a, a certain type that you're into, besides the whole got a nice personality, funny, treats me good, you know, all that other bullshit. Like, what do you actually see a guy in a club, at a bar, somewhere, and be like, that I like? When he's not really paying too much attention to a lot of girls at once, if he has his eye on one girl and he's just staring at her all night and he carries himself properly, he knows how to dress, and he knows just, how to catch your eye, just like he knows what to say, not just saying any like pickup line or anything he can, one guy would tell any girl. Because I can pick, I, I know I can pick and choose from what guys do that, who are just coming at you just because, you know, I need a girl right now. No, they're really w willing to like talk to anyone the same kind of way. So I just like the guy to be different. And so when I notice someone who's a little bit different than what I normally get from guys, then I'm like, okay, he stands out. And it doesn't really matter the race. I mean, even though I've mostly dated white guys and um, Hispanic guys, I have no problem dating a black guy either. Like, like he just has to be like exactly what I described. You know, I don't like guys who um, are just down to like fuck you and just leave and not like have a conversation or connect with you or have any kind of actual bond. Because then I know the difference between a real guy and a fuck boy who just really just doesn't care. Now, but aren't you submissive? So if a guy says, like, shut the fuck up, I just want to fuck, you're like... In bed, in bed. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got to get you to the bedroom in the bed first and then drop those lines on you. Yeah, like, you, we have to get comfortable with each other before that even happens. Like, in bed, like, I would love... Uh, I would love... I love, I love being submissive, but, like, when I first meet a guy, I want him to attract me in like a clever way and and then after that once we get comfortable then i would I, I would love for him to like you know say those words to me and like fuck me like that like in bed like i would love that but just of course i would not just randomly want to see any guy just come up to me and say hey girl come with me or like you know like say something just out of line at yeah. first no <laughs> 
Yeah, because when when dudes start acting out of pocket, you gotta you know you gotta pull the reins back a little bit on them. But um, <laughs> I, I like how you say that though. Like I would love a guy to say that to me. So just just whisper nicely in my ear. There's just those sweet words. Bitch, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> like that's like <laughs> that's like the making of like a Dave Chappelle scene right there, you know, like <laughs> but um so uh what are your plans still for the business? Like what is uh do you have like bigger goals that you kind of want to do in this business? Hmm, I I've had a lot of things come up in mind. Um I, I eventually want to um, produce, have my own site, you know, and produce my own porn and stuff like that, and or probably start my own agency. But I really do actually do have a passion for acting, and um, even though I got into this industry just for like for sex, I wanted to also have fun with uh, acting, and I love especially scripted scenes, dialogue, and something with a hot storyline to like show that I'm. I can connect with the camera and I can act so that I can be sexy and I can fuck. Like, I want to be able to do all that in combination. And and even if after the industry, when I'm done at one point, I do want to transition into mainstream acting. Now, do you think that's going to be difficult to do? Or do you think that, like, has society gotten to a point now in 2017 where we're accepting of people coming from that world and moving into mainstream? I've I've seen people succeed with it. It just it depends on how smart you are and how you go about things, you know. That's why I'm very cautious about the scenes I'm picking. I don't wanna ruin like there there's certain scenes out there that I know if that ever came up, no one would hire someone because they did a certain type of scene or something like that. Like, um I just I'm very careful with the type of scenes I agree to do and I've seen I've seen people successfully transition into music, into acting, and Diamond's done it and she's it's crazy because she's actually known for doing hardcore porn and she's doing music, mainstream music right now. So like she inspires me. So I'm like there's hope. I've seen, you know, girls from the industry who transition into the mainstream world, but normally it's girls with a big fan base. So what I'm trying to do is build a bigger like fan base and uh and try to transition smoothly. Now, what is something that you are totally against doing in the business? I mean, you say you're very picky and very choosy about what you mm-hmm. do, but do you have a list that's, like, non-negotiable? Um, the main thing I don't want to do is anything fully, like, degrading. I've seen, like, some just disgusting scenes that I would never do. Um, I've seen certain sites that I would never shoot for, and uh, I avoid those. And anytime a scene like that comes up, I would decline it. Anything degrading. Um, bondage is fine. Uh, BDSM is fine, but there's like a limit within that. And um, and then, of course, I do a lot of vanilla, pretty porn type stuff. So I'm just trying to keep a level, you know, with everything, but not go beneath my limits because I don't want to destroy myself as a person. And if I know I cannot handle or don't want to do a certain scene, I would never just do it for money. If I'm mentally, if I know I mentally can't handle it, I would not go into that. Because a lot of girls tend to do stuff like that. And they, when they see the money, when they hear, you know, the money at the moment, sometimes they're just like, I'll just do it because I need the money right now. That's not me. Yeah, there are, there's girls out there, they'll, they'll sell out, you know, they'll sell their soul. You know what I mean? Yeah, I won't, I wouldn't go that low. I wouldn't, I would not go that low. Do you watch your own stuff? Or... I know, not really. I cannot watch my very own porn. Like I can watch other people's porn, but I just don't want to watch myself. Like I don't want to actually. Like I can see myself on Camp Soda and just camming, but like to actually watch myself being recorded having sex, I don't. Hmm. I think it's awkward to be watching yourself sometimes. <laughs> so it's it's like watching game footage, though. You know what I mean? Like uh-huh. Ron James has to watch video on himself. You know what I mean to see where he screwed up. You know. So Yeah, and so now I'm starting to try to watch a little bit more of my porn just to see where I can get better in, like, on if I'm watching a, uh, a certain video, I try to see what I can do to improve my performance. So that's what I'm starting to do now. But it's still kind of awkward watching my own shit. My a little porn. less moaning here, more facial here, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, because I definitely want to work on more uh, face with, like, like, like um, like facial expression sometimes because sometimes you're so 
you can be so into a scene where you're not aware of how your face looks. Mm-hmm. So you want to like make sure your face is like angled a certain way for the for the camera. Because I I sometimes from some of my scenes I've noticed like I've been so into it to where like I'm not really I forget that the camera's there pretty much sometimes. Mm-hmm. That's like a so, gift and a curse, though, because, you know, it's like, all right, you're really enjoying it. But at the same time, like, you may have this, like, oh, shit, scared look on your face and some dude's mm-hmm. whacking off to your shit. And it's like, oh, I was almost there. And then she had this really, like, disturbing, like, look on her face. Like, this was, like, mm-hmm. not consensual or something and totally turned yes, me off. Yeah, I've had that for one, one of my teens. Someone thought I was, like crying or in pain i'm like no i loved it <laughs> no i really loved all of the dick you know it, it may have hurt at first and maybe that's what you saw but it was really it, yeah yeah it was really enjoyable <laughs> it did hurt at first. once you know it was in you know the, the first part may have saw little tears but then you know what i mean you sniffled and you know you were <laughs> back in the game you know so yeah <laughs> now, now everybody's got a presence online so this is the part of the podcast where I let you go ahead and promote anything and everything that you got going online. I know people are on IG and on, you know, Snapchat and Twitter and mm-hmm. you know, whatever else that's out there. So where can people find you at and troll you? My Instagram is YarasguyXO. Um Twitter is Yarasguy Triple X. I'm on Camp Soda, that's the campsite that I camp for. So you can find me on campsoda.com slash Yarasguy. And my Snapchat is YarasGuyXO. Now, uh, for people that are interested in the, in the Camp Soda thing, like how often, uh, how often are you doing that? I mean, since you are shooting, like, do you get the chance to, you know, do that as often as you'd like? Yeah, I've done I've done it like two days ago. I like, whenever I'm home, I just do it. Sometimes I set a a, a time where I want to wake up and camp, and normally I'm, I get on like. Typically, I would get on like 6 p.m. Pacific time or whatever because um, pe- it's convenient for people on the East Coast as well. Because I think 8, 8 p.m. on that side is like a decent time to be on. So I pick like a, t- a typical time where normally anyone could be on, and that's where the most traffic would be on the site. And uh, so I'm most I'm really frequently on there, and I'm always tweeting when I'm on, or I'll tweet 30 minutes before I get on. And I put it on Twitter, I put it on Snapchat or Instagram, so I let my fans know when I'll be on. Okay, and, it, and anything goes in that? Like, guys can request certain types of, uh, you know, outfits, or, like, how does that all work for people that are kind of new to that? Um, when I start, normally when I start off, I, I like to just have music going, and I'm, like, in a good scenery, and I'm always teasing, and that's what, kind of draws people in. You have to tease them. You can't just, like, sit there in front of the camera. So I'll wear, like, something really stuck because I have, like, I'm still buying new cam outfits, cam clothes and stuff like that. So, like, I'm wearing, like, a schoolgirl outfit or whatever. And, like, I'm always teasing. And then guys are like, okay, I like that. Then that's when they start dropping tokens and it gets me to do more things. So you kind of have to, like, do both. Like, you guys both have to do the same thing. I was going to say, I, I, I've i seen, like, cam shows and everything, and that's I guess that's when you start hearing all the, the, the blinging sound, right? That's when people are dropping them. Yeah. In there. Okay. I'm like, the first time I've ever watched one of those, like, I was like, all right, I'm just going to see what this is about. And then people were in there, and they're just like, bring, bring, bring. And I'm like, all right, either somebody's <laughs> yeah. really hitting high score on Mario, or, like, I guess that must be the coins that they're dropping in there. So mm-hmm. it's always a good sound, though, right? <laughs> yes, of yes. course. <laughs> so, before you leave, what do you, what message do you have for the fans? Anything you want to tell the fans, the people that are listening to you right now, people are getting to know you a little bit for the first time, and for the people who have been, you know, your day ones, um, this is your time to let them know, you know, what you want to tell them. I just want you guys to, you know, stay tuned for upcoming scenes for my kink scene to drop. I don't know exactly when it'll drop. Or, but stay tuned for that because that is my first girl girl on like for a company and that's my first bondage um bds i'm seeing and a lot of fans have been asking for me to do something like that so like keep an eye out for that <laughs> very awesome and um, there'll be a lot more to come after that and yeah <laughs> Yeah, just keep watching her shit, man. Follow her on, you know, on Instagram. Follow her on Twitter, and 
you know, just keep uh keep supporting her cuz uh you know, I got to learn a lot about you, you know, I was I I don't want to lie, I'm you know, it's a casual fan, you know, I have seen some of your stuff before, you know, and uh but I didn't know a whole lot about you. So I hope, you know, everybody got to learn a little bit about you tonight. And uh, we hope to hear and see big things from you real soon. And uh, we can't wait for you to drop that anal scene. So the kink scene, uh, like I said, just keep doing your thing. And we really appreciate you coming on and kind of just let everybody know who you are and what you're about in this business. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. You have a great evening.